organic learning. Today, we are doing another awesome fan favorite episode where we feature the favorite vehicles of our biggest fans. Now, in this video, we're featuring the favorites of Chris in Fort Francis, Ontario, Canada. Thanks for sending these in, Chris. By the way, if you would like to have your favorites featured, you can get all the details in the description box below. All right, you guys, let's jump right in. Let's do it. All right, you guys, we got our first vehicle of the day, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> this one's pretty awesome. This, you guys, is a taxi. Yeah, you got it. Now, a taxi's really great because a taxi will take you wherever you need to go. Now, at the end of the trip, you'll actually go ahead and pay the taxi driver based on how many miles you've driven and how long you've actually spent in the taxi. Now what's really cool is taxi drivers, or cabbies as they're known, they know the city inside and out, you guys. They know all the shortcuts, all the side streets, when to take the freeways, when not to take the freeways. Their job is to get there safely, but as quickly as possible. Now maybe you've taken a taxi before uh, from the airport, or maybe you've taken one to a special event with your mom and dad. They are definitely a lot of fun. Now this particular taxi is a Prius and it's a hybrid which means it has a gas engine and an electric engine. Now lots of times, especially in cities, taxis will be caught up in a lot of traffic but doesn't have to worry because that's when the electric engine will kick in and that way they're not just burning through a lot of gas. <laughs> I like this one too because it's got kind of a cool lime green color. You can see this MBX taxi on the side and they have kind of a reflective sticker that goes the length of the car. That way it's very visible especially at night and you can see that taxi coming. Now at the end of your trip, don't forget to go ahead and tip your cabbie and say thanks buddy. <laughs> beep beep. This you guys is a taxi. All right, you guys, we got a, whoa, we got one here that is completely over the top. Look at this, you guys. Well, this is an articulated bus. That's right. Now, sometimes people will call this a, a bendy bus or a slinky bus. Um, can you see why? <laughs> That's right. It kind of bends and moves like a, like a little slinky there. Now, basically, this is two buses in one. You've got your, your front section, which is kind of like a regular bus. And then the rear section is almost like a, the trailer part of a bus and they're connected <laughs> with this little accordion piece in the middle. That's what I like to call it. I like to call these accordion buses because this part reminds me of the musical instrument, an accordion. Now these are great because of this section right here, it allows the bus to take very, very tight turns. So that's really great and of course because it's two big sections of bus, it can hold lots and lots of people you guys. In fact. These things can hold up to 200 people and they're about 60 feet long. Whoa, that is a really, really long bus, you guys. Now, this particular one, as you can see from the emblem on the front, is a Mercedes, so you know this one is driving in style. I love the light blue coloring and the really cool kind of orangey red stripe right here on the top, you guys. Got a couple little, little sunroofs here for ventilation and fresh air, and I'll tell you what, riding one of these, <laughs> Whether you're sitting down or standing up, they are a ton of fun. This is an articulated bus. All right, I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, does anybody know what this next one is? Have you guys ever seen anything like this before? <laughs> of course, I'm kidding you guys, you know what this is. This is a school bus, oh yeah. And I know that because it says right here, School bus, and let me just double check. Oh yeah, it's definitely a school bus, you guys. <laughs> now this particular one is a Type C school bus, which is also known as a conventional school bus. Now, they typically have a, a hood and front fender assembly, which means that the engine is in front of the windshield right here, and the entrance door is located behind the front wheel. So, as you can see, here's the traditional doors. They open right up, you go ahead, just take your seat <laughs> wherever you want. Now a Type C school bus is the most popular school bus out there and the longer ones can actually seat up to 72 elementary school kids. Wow, that's a lot of students you guys. 
Now this one actually looks to be a Ford B700 school bus, which is actually kind of a cool vintage one. They don't make these anymore. They stopped uh, around the late 1990s, but I'll tell you what, back in the day, this is the one that actually I used to ride to school. Now these Ford B700s, man, they had really neat air brakes, <laughs> which made a ton of cool squeaking noises. So whenever these things would roll up to a stop, it'd be like this. And <laughs> everybody would be like, oh, take it easy, dude. <laughs> and then we'd take off and just have a good time on our way into school. All right, you guys, hope you had fun with this one. And this is a school bus. Wow, you guys, this next one is so wonderful. I mean, I've got some good memories on one of these. This is a Greyhound bus. Whoa, check that out. That is so cool. Now, this is probably the most iconic bus there is, at least here in the United States. Now, Greyhounds are great because you can use them to travel all over the country. And the United States, man, it is a pretty big place. Now. All you do is you, you store your luggage underneath here in these compartments. You go ahead and hop on right here, kind of like a school bus. Find your seat anywhere that's open and just look out the window and watch as the world goes by. Man, Greyhounds are such a great way to see the country. In fact, kind of like an RV, these Greyhounds even have a bathroom in the back because sometimes you're going to take a pretty long trip on one of these. Now, Lots of songs have been written about Greyhound buses over the years. Probably because they're involved in transporting people during, you know, very memorable, important moments in their lives. Like, you know, breaking out on your own for the first time, or traveling to the big city to find fame and fortune, or, or maybe just to come home to family and friends during the holidays. This, you guys, is a Greyhound bus. Coming home on a Greyhound. Coming home! Oh boy! Uh, I'm gonna have to try my hardest to pick up this next one. Ooh, whoa! <laughs> this one is huge, you guys. And this is a streetcar. Wow! Absolutely enormous. Let's do a nice little scan of this thing now. It's kind of like a train in that it runs on tracks that are flush with the street. It actually shares the road with other vehicles and pedestrians, and because of this, it doesn't go very fast like a traditional train or a subway. Now what's really, really cool is that they run along all the main roads of a city powered solely by electrical overhead wires. Yeah, that's really, really neat. Now the streetcar uses this thing on the top called a pantograph to connect to the power from the overhead wires. Now Toronto, which is near where Chris lives, actually maintains the most extensive streetcar system in the Americas in terms of total track, length, and number of cars and ridership, you guys. Now I've been to Toronto myself a couple of times. I've ridden these. They are a lot of fun. They're very quiet. It's a great way to, you know, kind of check out the city and they're very safe. Great stuff here, and this oh, is very heavy <laughs> and a streetcar. Oh, absolutely. Look at this next one, you guys. This thing is great. This is a hotel shuttle. You know what? I love these. You know why I love hotel shuttles so much? It's because usually if you're riding in a hotel shuttle and you know you're going along, that means you're going to your hotel. Well, if you're going to your hotel, that probably means you're staying somewhere because you're going on a fun trip with your family. That's right, and I love taking fun trips with my family. Now, this particular hotel shuttle is actually a minivan that lots of families use. Maybe your family uses a minivan. It's got three rows of seats, one, two, and three. It can actually hold up to eight people. That's a lot of people, you guys. It also has a lot of room here in the back because if you're traveling with your family and you got, you know, a couple brothers and sisters, you probably got a lot of luggage. Put it right here in the back, you guys. It's got a lot of windows, so, you know, if you got a long drive from the airport to your hotel, you can just kind of, you know, look out the window, take in the sights of the new city or wherever you are visiting. Now, usually, these things will pick you up at the airport, they'll take you to your hotel, and then at the end of the trip, 
They'll pick you up and take you right back to the airport. This particular one is the Metro Hotel Shuttle, which sounds very cool. And as you can see, got some airplanes here on the side. Oh yeah, this guy's used to going to the airport all the time, aren't you, pal? Absolutely. This is a hotel shuttle. Wow, I think without question, we've got our strongest and toughest vehicle of the day, you guys. This is a locomotive. Woohoo! <laughs> now, check it out. These locomotives have huge, powerful engines, sometimes as big as 16 cylinders. Now, this particular one runs on diesel fuel which, you know, maybe some of you guys have seen before at the gas station when your parents are filling up. They got some of those pumps are for diesel fuel. Also, most of the tractor trailers that you'll see on the highways and the freeways, they also run on diesel fuel. Now, if you can see here on the top, there's a bunch of fans right here. Well, these diesel engines get so hot that these fans have to work all the time to make sure that the engine stays really, really cool, especially when the train is stopped and it doesn't have any wind to cool it off. Now, you can look on the top here as well, you see a couple of really big old horns, because when this train is coming down the tracks, make sure you are definitely not near it, because this thing is coming in and coming in really strong. In fact, these things are so big and heavy, usually it takes about a mile to a mile and a half for these to actually stop. Now, as you can see here, this particular one is a diesel locomotive, used by the GO Transit System, which is a regional public transit system in southern Ontario, Canada. GO Transit uses diesel trains and passenger cars, and it carries over 65 million people every year. Hey, that's a lot of people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is really cool stuff, you guys, and this is a locomotive. All right, you guys, we got our last vehicle of the day. And there's no other way to describe this one other than totally radical awesome. <laughs> That's right, gang. This is a limousine. Wow. Check it out. I'm going to do a quick rotation, man. This thing is all black, all cool, tinted windows. I mean, this thing is really, really slick. Now, what makes a limousine a limousine, of course, is they're super, super long. That's right. And... They're driven by a driver called a chauffeur. That's right, it's a French word, a fancy French word for limousine driver. Now, these things are used for, you know, weddings, prom, graduation night, any type of special occasion. I tell you what, whenever you're in a limousine, you're riding in style and you're just having a great, great time. Now, sometimes this one doesn't have it, but sometimes they got sunroofs on the top. You can open those up. And if you're going slow and it's safe, stick your head out. Take some really fantastic, fun pictures to, you know, remember the night by. Now, another little secret on this one. This is actually the same limousine that the President of the United States rides in. That's right. They call this one Cadillac One. And check it out. Right there in the front, you can see the Cadillac logo. And check this out on the back. See if we can get a close-up of that. Dreaming big. Now, <laughs> I have feeling that's not what uh, the license plate says on the president's one but it's very cool it is important to dream big you guys and you can do a lot of dreaming on one of these this is a limousine oh yeah wow we had so much fun today you guys another awesome day of street vehicles and a very special thanks goes out to Chris in Fort Francis, Ontario, Canada for sending in his favorites. Chris, you're awesome, my man. Now, if you would like to have your favorites featured, you can get all the details in the description box below. And don't forget to check us out on Twitter and Instagram. We had a ton of fun today, and we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. If you liked our video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and leave a fun comment below. Thanks everybody.